Hi everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today I'm sitting down with two of my friends and dear mentors, Loka and Vidarba, as well as my um, personal assistant and sidekick, Delia. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about the Bhagavad Gita. Um, it's a time of year in the Bhakti tradition where we uh, celebrate the Gita through a, a sort of a, a holiday called Gita Jayanti, and um, that's just happened very recently. And after this occasion, um, Loka and Vidarbha are offering a Bhagavad Gita class online, which they do um, every, a few times per year. And so we're going to talk about the Gita and also um, promote their upcoming class, which I highly recommend. And Delia, who's also been in the class for some time, is going to speak about some of her experiences and things like that. So if you're brand new to the Bhagavad Gita, you've never heard of it, or you have heard of it, but you've never read it, or you've read it, but you wish you could go farther with it or have some help unpacking it, um, this is going to be a talk that I think you'll really enjoy. So um, thank you all for being here. And thank you, Loka and Vidarba and Delia for all being here today, too. Thank, thank you, you so Achita Bhava. Thank you, Delia, for organizing this session and greatly appreciate being here. Yeah, it's such a joy to be back here with you, Achita. <laughs> for sure. Well, I want to start with the basic question. Um, I mention on my channel a lot, as everyone knows who's watching this, I mention the Gita a lot. You know, you'll hear me just sling in a verse here or there from Krishna talking about how to handle things that we come across in life. And it's a book that's completely changed my life. Um, but I wonder if we could start off by just asking some basic questions in case people haven't heard of the Bhagavad Gita. Um, could you guys just tell us what is the Gita? Why is it so revered around the world? Yeah, so the Bhagavad Gita is actually part of this great epic called the Mahabharat. And it's a dialogue um, between Arjuna and Krishna. Arjuna is a warrior who is about to embark on the greatest battle of his life. And he has this moment of you know, deep existential crisis where he questions the very purpose of what he's doing. And Krishna as the chariot driver speaks to him on various topics, essentially talking about what is dharma, what is our duty, uh, how should work be performed? What is karma? What is yoga? So it's actually the original, one of the original texts on yoga. And more than that, you know, it's a book that acts as a, sort of like a, um, um, a guide. Um, and, and, you know, as we go through this terrain of life, you know, what is the summit? And what are the different ways to that summit? And what are the pitfalls along the way? And you know, what are the things that we should pack on, you know, on this journey? And what are the things that we should leave behind? So there are many things that the Bhagavad Gita talks about, which, which to the modern man is of great relevance because we find ourselves also uh, in this place of um, you know, sort of like the word broken open, right? We have these moments where we really go deep and question like, what, you know, who am I and what am I doing? And, why should I even do what I'm doing? And it's kind of interesting that it was spoken on a battlefield. Um, yeah, it allows you to deal with the challenges of life in a, in a sane way. And as, as we can see, the world is becoming crazier and crazier with so much stress and anxiety and having to juggle so many things in our life, our fam family, career, kids, and social responsibilities. So Bhagavad Gita kind of provides a, a way to really find our true self and also see others in, in, in a spiritual way. And that way, when we are dealing with challenges of life, it's, it's, it's uh, done uh, with, a, with a platform, on a platform of um, uh, higher realization and, and it's in, in a mood of uh, service and cooperation. So that way, uh, any challenge can be dealt with in, in, in a very meaningful way. I find it very interesting, uh, Chitta, that the first chapter is called the Yoga of Lamentation. And uh, in Sanskrit, it's Vishada Yoga. And I, it just really speaks to me because many of us find ourselves at these crossroads and, and we are thinking, you know, we're experiencing this emptiness or, or any kind of, uh, you know, um, a dilemma. And the Bhagavad Gita really provides a dialogue that can really speak to us. Like I remember when we first read it, there were questions that we had and the Bhagavad Gita, of course, spoke to that, but then it also you know, brought out questions that we never could even have articulated, but was somewhere lingering within us. So it's, it's mm. very personal as we read it. Yeah, it allows you to, it shows how to connect with ourselves. Mm. 
how to uh, how to see who we truly are, how to deal with our mind, how to deal with our uh, desires, and how to truly connect with others in a deeper and meaningful way. Beautiful. Um, when I first came across the Gita, I was in graduate school and I read it. <clears throat> it had this impact on me that I, it, not like I've read a lot of different sacred texts from the Bible and the Quran and, you know, the Tao Te Ching. And I, I love so many different sacred texts that are in some different ways contributing to spiritual awakening. The Bhagavad Gita is unique for me in, in my path anyway, because it felt like a conversation between Arjuna and Krishna that it, it, it transcends time. Like, yes, it's taking place in like, almost like India's equivalent of the Iliad or the Odyssey. It's like the, the great epic of India. And it's taking place within this story, this epic story. And that's part of it. But then as soon as Krishna and Arjuna start talking, there's just this way that I felt transported into the deepest questions that I feel like every human has that I certainly had. And it really was timeless. And it was also, even though there's all of this philosophy about yoga and the soul um, and so forth, and there's words like dharma and karma, I think it's safe to say, and I want to ask you guys to follow up with this and Delia too, but I think it's safe to say that when people read this, you really don't feel inundated by something that's foreign or difficult to understand, or it, it really does feel like it could be spoken between these questions that Arjuna is asking Krishna could be anyone today, 50 years ago, 5,000 years ago. Um, did it hit you guys like that when you first read it? And also Delia, how did it hit you when you first read it? Um, well, first of all, uh, thank, I'm really glad to be here. Didn't get to say that earlier. Um, I think that the Bhagavad Gita is really interesting because um it's embedded within the context of this story, this battle that's going on. But the conversation that Arjuna has with Krishna, it really just feels like when you sit down with a really close friend at a coffee shop and you just start um, wondering and talking about what life is all about and trying to figure it, it, figure it out, except that um, in this case, this actually gives you all of the answers, you know, whereas with your friend, you might just be wondering if you're actually um, making the right decisions or thinking about things the right way. Um, the Bhagavad Gita, it has this feel to it of just being very uh, conversational. And I think it's amazing that it covers such profound philosophical uh, concepts, but it also grounds it so much. Um, I don't think people realize how relatable the Bhagavad Gita is to everyday life. And I've definitely found that to be the case. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, okay. yeah, I mean, it is uh, amazing that how uh, Bhagavad Gita is considered like the essence of all the, the knowledge coming from the Vedas and such like a profound ocean of knowledge is, is, is kind of contained in a cup. Uh, you can think of Bhagavad Gita as a, as a, as a cup where uh, you can easily sip it in. And it, it feels uh, that there are many advanced concepts, but as, as Dalia was saying, it's, it's presented in a very conversational way. And uh, Arjuna is continuously uh, asking different questions and he's presenting that um, he wants to know about different aspects. So it, it becomes very easy to and those are the same questions that I, I was asking. Uh, what is life? What is the purpose of life? Where do I come from? And things like that. Uh, what is meaning? Uh, what is value? Uh, how do I connect with others? So those, those questions are asked by Arjuna and, and, and Krishna answers them in, in, in multi, um, in, in, in like different layers. So it's like peeling different layers from our own consciousness. Yeah, I find it very interesting that sometimes as people in the modern world, we, uh, we might feel like people 5,000 years ago, or you know, like you're saying, with 550 years ago, you know, how different they must have been from us. But it's amazing to see how similar we are. You know, mm -hmm. the very questions that Arjuna is asking are the very 
questions that we find ourselves asking. Maybe the circumstances might be different and Arjuna's battleground might be different from our battleground, but we are confronted with very similar questions. I mean, I know for myself growing up, I always had this question like, what for? What's the point? You know, and that was a question that I always carried with me. And it was so amazing and to, to see those questions actually, you know, it was very validating to see those questions being asked by Arjuna. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and no question was off, off the, you know, off, off mm-hmm. bounds. Yeah, I mean, you know, Arjuna is presenting doubts that we would have. So yeah, it's like Delia was saying, very relatable and transcends time, you know, and transcends space as well. So. Yeah, another way to put, that, put Bhagavad Gita is, is, is a dialogue with doubt. Mm-hmm. Arjuna is, is continuously putting his doubts and it's a dialogue. So mm-hmm. it makes it very relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt when I first read it. And I'm really glad to hear, I, and I, I had a sense you guys would say the same thing, but it, it doesn't feel like when I first got into yoga and the Gita, I, I kind of thought, I'm not qualified. Like, this is from a different part of the world. It's going to be too overwhelming for me to learn. And I read the Gita and it it felt so accessible to me, so easy and clear to understand for the most part. Although there was a point in time where um, I, I was taking a private yoga teacher training and my teacher happened to be um, a bhakta, meaning the a, a practicing bhakti yoga, and we were reading the Gita together and having someone there to read it with. I had by this point, this was, I think I started studying with him in two, 2017. And by that point, I'd read the Gita probably five or six times before some different translations and, but reading it with a teacher, someone who had spent, you know, decades of their life regularly studying the Gita with other teachers in a lineage of teachers, the community around reading the Gita has to be one of the most special things that's ever happened in my life. Not, not exaggerating because it's as though, um, well, sometimes you'll hear the word, um, sutra used in it uh, for yoga scriptures, like the yoga sutras of Patanjali, that the, the sutra is like a suture and it can be unpacked and there's a lot contained in a little. And my general under, understanding or impression is that the sages that wrote in the language of Sanskrit had the ability to pack a lot in. And so when you read the sacred text in community with people who have been unpacking I mean, it's not very long. You know, you could you can read the Gita through, you can recite it through in a group in three hours, something like that. But to unpack it, you know, verse by verse, and to really explore the implications of things with other people, that's when it really came alive for me. And I guess what I'm wondering is, um, if you could talk a little bit more about what studying the Gita in a group is like, what it does for you. And I know that like Delia started studying in your in your study group i've been to loka and vidarbha study group several times as well and and have you know kind of regularly hung out with them in different um contexts with bhakti but in, in loka and vidarbha too if you guys if all of you could take turns talking about what it means to study gita in a group when that started for you how that shifted the dynamic with the the gita for you individually too so i think um <clears throat> I think we've mentioned this in our um, study group many times that bhakti is is you know is is deepened and nourished and in fact um, facilitated by uh, others around us. It's a it's a very um, it's the coming together of of uh, like-minded hearts and, and the sharing and the reflection that really deepens our understanding. And especially for a text like Bhagavad Gita, um, you know, like you just described, you know, having somebody who can sort of help us navigate um, that path, so, which is simple to understand, but sometimes you know, we may miss you know, certain aspects of it or even the application part of it, you know, which is something that uh, when we are with others, then we also learn and understand like the practical application and not just understand, but also find the inspiration, you know, because we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded by a vibration that is not exactly conducive to our spiritual you know, development. And so having a strong uh, group, a strong association, we have found uh, has been so, um, um, uh, so important for our, our spiritual growth, for our, for our being able 
to uh, you know wake up every morning and feel inspired you know to to walk down this uh, this journey into the self and uh, yeah i'll go after delia no go, go ahead delia <laughs> uh okay well even though i think the bhagavad gita is a text that meets you where you're at first of all um if you're just reading it for the first time you'll get something out of it but it's also a text that re- rewards further reading further invers- investigation and further communication and i definitely agree that um having a teacher who can guide you through it is extremely valuable and also having a group of students who are going through the text studying with you is also extremely valuable and i ha- have had this experience going through the course where hearing everybody else's questions is enriching to everybody and then also Loka and Vidarva's fabulous responses and I had read the Bhagavad Gita before I um, took Loka and Vidarva's course but I definitely felt like I gained a whole new understanding of everything um especially because they're so good at uh, explaining these big concepts in a way that's so clear to understand. That's, that's a compliment to, to you, uh, Vidarva and Loka. You're so good at explaining things. And um, yeah, I definitely feel that um, it's worthwhile to study in the group and it's worthwhile to study in this group. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, for me, the group study um, is like you can have a meal on your, uh, by yourself versus having a meal with a group of friends. And it really enhances the experience of the meal, the experience of the study so many, many more times when you are doing it with others. Mm-hmm. For me personally, uh, sometimes when I study on my own, yeah, I understand something. But when you hear that same concept or the same uh, principle from others who have taught it thought about it in a different way, uh, it really enriches my own understanding and my appreciation. So it's like the, the feeling in their heart gets tr- transferred to my heart and I feel more enthused when I see others uh, appreciating Bhagavad Gita in a different way. I feel that, yeah, I, uh, I'm really benefiting a lot from their association. I was just thinking about uh, an example <clears throat> about there are these, uh, there is this place in Rajasthan which is called a room of mirrors and there are these tiny uh, mirrors that are embedded on the, on the roof and on the walls. And when you enter into that uh, room of mirrors and you, you know, uh, light a little matchstick, then what happens is that one single matchstick gets reflected in each individual mirror, which then reflects the light back and it just enhances and just makes the illumination that much greater. So, you know, in a similar way, when there are so many of us studying together and that same knowledge, uh, that philosophy, is getting um, illuminated by each heart, which is then getting reflected back to the group. I think the illumination and the understanding is that much deeper. And Bhagavad Gita is a text that is ultimately meant to enrich our hearts and meant to enrich our um, consciousness. And that is best uh, done in in, in the association of like-minded people. And that's how I feel even Krishna himself in the chapter, he recommends that uh, Bhagavad Gita should, um, should be studied uh, with like-minded people and that way we enrich each other. Mm-hmm. There's also um, the sincerity of people who are studying there that's really contagious. And there's also an openness in how each of us approach the text and the material. The group really becomes a safe space. Arjuna is all of us. <laughs> Arjuna is us. And so then uh, you read the text and you start to reflect upon your own experiences and how what's being said in the text applies to your own life. And then you share it. And then somebody else shares their story. Somebody else shares how it relates to their life. And it just creates this amazing um, support group. (laughs) It makes you not feel alone also Mm. because you can see that um, other people are going through the same things that, that you are. And uh, it really enriches everyone's understanding. Yes. Mm-hmm. The one thing we can say for sure is, Dalia, your presence and your deep questions and your deep reflections, uh, we personally benefit so much, so much from those. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can't express. So uh, uh-huh. thank you for uh, gi- giving us your, your association all these months. Uh-huh. Thank you. Well, I, I 
was really hoping to come on this video because I'm just so enthusiastic about this program <laughs> and I love it so much. I've gotten so much out of it. Uh, I think that everybody will benefit from it. And I also want to compliment Loka and Bidarbe because they are so good at holding space for everybody in a group. They really make you feel seen, heard, known, understood. They will uh, make sure that everybody who wants to speak gets a chance to speak. Um, they will, if you haven't attended for a few days, they'll come on and they'll say, oh, you know, we haven't seen you. How have you been? And it's just, it's such a beautiful environment to learn the Gita in because um, it's not some philosophical academic study. It's... Um, it's a sangha, it's, it's a group, it's support, and it's so much easier to stay on the path when you see, when you have such wonderful people and when you have the support of all of uh, your classmates or everybody else in the group. I really like the point that you made that it's not just a philosophical academic study. Literally, Bhagavad Gita means the song of the divine. And a song is best sung when we sing it together. Mm. <laughs> I think we might... Uh... Actually, you know, <laughs> back to you. If you oh have. no, no, this is great. I'm. This is what I hoped would happen. Would you guys would just <laughs> bell? Yeah, no, that's just ring, ring on with the music. No, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like um, the reason that I'm doing this video for oh, everyone who watches. Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. The reason I'm doing this video for everyone who watches my channel is that you hear me talk a lot about astrology needing to be paired with daily spiritual practice. And so I've created a lot of bhakti content, um, even separate from the astrology content, in the hopes that people who are kind of looking for that practice can um, take, take up a path and, and take up the bhakti teachings if, they're, if they resonate. Um, every day of my life for the past three years in about a month or about two months from now, it'll be three years that every single day, a few days here or there that I've missed, but every single day for the past three years, I took up the challenge of reading and now, now chanting in the Sanskrit, that took some time, but um, reading a chapter of the Gita a day and um, studying it s sort of systematically in that way in groups of people throughout this, these three years. Um, that has been for me, like an, like an anchor, like along with, you know, mantra meditation, which people on my channel have heard me talk a lot about and, um, and reading the Gita, like th that, those are, that's like my, my rock, that's my anchor. And, but it's, it's not a solo quest. Like the, the best way that I know how to, it, sometimes, you know, I think about how similar Bhakti is to the two primary teachings of Jesus. And a lot of people who listen to this come from Christian backgrounds in the West. The first thing he said was love God with all you've got your heart, soul, the whole thing, just love God. That's the number one commandment. And then the second one he said is like it, which is love other people as you love yourself, love the love thy neighbor instruction. And when you, in my experience with Bhakti, the reason that it can't just be an isolated solo thing, read the book in private, you know, read the bhakti in private or, or the, excuse me, the Gita in private, uh, chant in private and so forth is that we really can't connect the God, the presence of God in other people um, to the presence of God in our own heart um, and in all things, unless we're connecting that private connection with God to a public connection where we, we hang out with people who are interested in growing spiritually and, the Gita facilitates that, but it, it not only does it facilitate that connection with other like-minded people, but every time, and I'm just echoing what you guys are saying, every time that someone has an insight or a reflection about their life in the light of this, these beautiful teachings, you get their crystallized little insight is something that everybody gets to sort of taste and touch and hold, and it becomes your own insight. Um, and all of and your insights that come to the surface literally are, are helping other people in the group. That's the most profound thing that I can say about it is that watching other people's, both their doubts, their questions, their reflections and insights, their aha moments, all of that 
feeds my soul so deeply. Um, so, and that's what you guys were saying too. So, I mean, we're all just sitting here singing the praises of the Gita and that's the byproduct of all of this is that suddenly you'll find yourself somewhere just glowing about the Gita with a bunch of people. And, and that happens to also be, uh, part of the description of what happens when you do bhakti <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just start hanging out with people glowing about about krishna and about these beautiful practices so anyway the next question that i have for you guys is um in terms of the group itself because the purpose of this of course is for everyone who watches my channel who's been I've, i get received tons of emails from people being like hey i'm really resonating with what you're saying about needing a daily spiritual practice where are the next steps I can take? I've talked a lot about mantra meditation, as I said, and this is another this is another way to go. If you're looking for some way to deepen your spiritual life or make that uh, make you know find a spiritual practice to be every an everyday part of your life or a weekly part of your life, the Gita class has been that for me, and so that's why I'm promoting it because it can be that for you too. But maybe you guys could talk a little bit about the format, about what happens, about what people can expect when they sign up. Just kind of give give people a sense of what happens if you come and uh, hang out. So um, right now, you know, this new batch that we are starting on 10th of January, um, we have a presentation on the Bhagavad Gita where we have tried to draw from several sources. So from science, you know, um, um, psychology and, and, you know, different things and just to sort of, uh, you know, talk about the Bhagavad Gita more in terms of uh, different themes that we, that we see through the Bhagavad Gita. So that would be, uh, you know, a sort of a discussion format. Um, we are also, uh, you know, depending on the interest level of the group uh, and how many are interested, we could also, you know, start and we've done that with Delia and, you know, the previous uh, group that we had a 20, 20, 21 day mantra meditation challenge. So we can also look into that and, you know, and see if we want to do something like that. So that we would do once the whole group came together. But for sure, when we meet once a week, we would, you know, come together, teach, you know, this process of mantra meditation, get into the Bhagavad Gita, discuss, um, yeah, our format is like we go through uh, each chapter and, and in each, each chapter we identify the major themes that have been brought out um, by, uh, by Krishna and Arjuna and uh, we try to relate those questions and those themes with our examples from our everyday life or what other people are talking about. So make it more relatable that yeah, Bhagavad Gita is not like a some philosophical treatise, but it is something that is actually happening in the world right now. And those same topics are being discussed in maybe in different ways by different thinkers and different philosophers, but we are all dealing with the same. So it kind of um, coming together of the different minds and, and, and looking at the Bhagavad Gita in, in that contemporary way. Mm -hmm. So that the format is like we, we go through each verse, we, we read through the, each of the verses of the Bhagavad Gita. And then like say uh, each Sunday, we meet and we'll discuss, say, maybe 15 or 20 verses, and then we read through them, and then we have our presentation where we bring out those themes and pluck them out. And then there is room for questions and answers and discussions. So we want to keep it uh, very discussion-oriented. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that we really feel um, in our own life, in our own journey of our spiritual life, we feel that it's so important to have a safe space where no, you know, all questions can be brought up and, and these things can be discussed, you know, threadbare. And I think that really helps, helps us, you know, um, yeah, deepen our understanding. So that's kind of the format. Yes, I, I echo that, that the format is, it's very contemporary. It's very multimedia oriented. It's very dynamic and it holds your interest. Um, I didn't find it to be dry at all. They'll show you uh, TED Talk videos. They'll show you nature videos. They'll show you all sort of things that are very relatable to us in the modern world, but tie it into the text. And then at the end also give you, well, and throughout, give you the opportunity to talk about it. And uh, what Vidarbha just said about um, the group being a safe space, that's completely true because it's not a place where we all we all come in and we drink the same Kool-Aid, you know, um, it's it, you. There is no judgment there for people who have doubts and who have questions. That's kind of the premise of the course itself. So 
it's not like you have to be like, oh, everybody's, you know, uh, thinking the same thing and, and, and I have a doubt about it and I don't know whether to express it. You totally can. And that's encouraged. Uh, what is it that um, you guys have said about curiosity or doubt being part of intelligence or part of the process? Yeah, process? yeah. So intelligence has five different aspects and doubt being one of them. And uh, in my own life, I've been kind of contemplating so much of this lately, how, you know, both faith and doubt, they have to be in dialogue, you know, for it to be real. Otherwise, you know, it can just, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's I guess, what, what you said, Delia, that being the premise and that being something we really feel is, um, is, is a prerequisite for a deeper understanding. Yeah, that safe space is, is basically being comfortable with our doubts mm. and, and being comfortable uh, with being uh, able to express those doubts and then also not just express them, but also hear those doubts. And sometimes when we hear doubts from others, uh, if my understanding or if my faith is not uh, well placed, then I, I may get disturbed by the doubts of others. So having that space where we, we can express as well as hear doubt and, and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it creates trust also in the group. Yeah, it creates trust. And so you're coming together. The format is through Zoom, is that right? Yes. Yeah, it's a Zoom. Uh, the format is Zoom. And then we meet from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah. And 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. And is it one day a week? Is it every day of the week? Can you speak to that <laughs> schedule? Yes, it's Sundays, every Sunday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, yep, yeah. that's, that's it. And like I said, you know, once we come together, we'll find out if people are interested in doing a daily meditation with us, then we can more than we'll be more than happy to facilitate that. So that way there can be some continuity even during the rest of the six days. I can't say enough about how amazing it is to pair as i was just saying and i didn't know that you guys were doing mantra meditation alongside of the gita classes but like i just can't say enough to everybody how like what a special opportunity it is to learn mantra meditation with these two um they're just luminous people luminous beings and um they've taught me a lot about the path of yoga and about mantra meditation um and so to be able to potentially look it, do a little bit of, you know, learning mantra meditation alongside of the Gita. It's a really sweet opportunity. So I, I hope people will take advantage of it. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about, um, well, Delia, you, you, as this process went on with the Gita and you've been in Gita class with Loka and Vidarbha for a while, you began chanting during the process as well. Maybe you could speak a little bit to what it's been like to pair a little bit of mantra meditation with the Gita um, classes that you took. Sure. Well, um, I had actually uh, begun a mantra meditation practice before joining the group that began in June. And I had read the Bhagavad Gita before joining the group, but I found my experience to be completely different once I actually joined. Uh, and I think when you're just starting out with a spiritual practice and you don't have that really uh, solidified in you yet because you're just starting out, it's very hard to manage it on your own. Um, I'm, you mentioned, Achuta, earlier you mentioned um, something about Christian thought, and I'm reminded of the phrase, well, or the idea about like the sheep, the lone sheep away from the pack, that's kind of more vulnerable, but that when they're with everybody else, and I had never really understood that uh, until taking this course, and just when I started it, and when I was in this group environment, receiving all this group support, and then also participating in the mantra meditation challenge, it became so much easier for me to maintain a constant practice every day with others. Uh, and um, I just found myself advancing and progressing so much more than I had before, and also with the study of the Gita. So it's just, it's a really helpful support so you don't feel like you have to do it all on your own and it just makes it a lot easier is there um time requirement outside of class that's a question that everyone will a practical question that people may have no, I mean, yeah right now the only thing we recommend is that if people are able to read the, those verses uh, maybe 10 or 15 so maybe it, it won't take more than 10 or 15 minutes at the most um, during the week. And if people are interested, then we can, we can think about maybe 
coming up with some uh, assignments or something just to facilitate a deeper study. But own. that would be completely optional. optional. Yeah. 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 And this is free, right? Um, people will ask me that too. Does it cost anything to register? Um, I'm sure that there are different funds that Loka and Vidarba support in a charitable way that you would gladly take donations to, but this is a course that's, that's um, free. You're, you're offering this as a service. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Really beautiful, really beautiful offering because so many times, you know, people hear a video like this and they'll be like, all right, so how much does it cost? It's like nothing. <laughs> just, just come together and study this beautiful text, maybe learn about mantra meditation. And hopefully this is helpful for people. Um, well, there, I, I don't believe there, I mean, there's not a charge or a cost for the program, but I do believe that if you want to make a donation, then you also accept that. And, um, and you have Logan Vidar, but you know where those funds go to, right? Yeah, we, we actually place Bhagavad Gita's in motels and in prisons, and we send out hospitals. to the best veterans affairs hospitals and different places. So uh, whatever donations we get, and you know, those can be, um, yeah, used. That, yeah, that would be like your contribution to spreading the knowledge that you're receiving. So that's, that's been an ongoing effort that we have been part of for the last 25 years is, is, is making Gita available in all these places. So anybody is, is welcome to make any donation they'd like, and yeah, we can share that information during the, during the class. But it's definitely not a requirement. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that um, people should probably know is that picking up a copy of the Gita is, you know, that's something that, that might be a small cost to incur, just to pick up your own copy, and there'll be a copy that the group is, is reading through that's recommended. Is that right? That can is I truly answer this? Yes, yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Okay, um, I knew we were going to get this. We're going to get this question. People are going to be asking, "What version of the Gita um, are we using in class?" And it's the Bhagavad Gita as it is, um, which is the translation by AC Bhakti. Bhakti. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking right now. Bhakti Vedanta, uh, Swami Prabhupada. It's by Prabhupada. Yes, exactly. And the thing is. Um, if you have the book, that's great. You don't even need to get it because um, it's available uh, digitally, free, online, and you can read the verses um, off of the screen. So this is part of the format of the course where uh, Loka and Vidarbha will actually have the verses on screen. So that's not a barrier to entry at all. If you don't have the book, if you don't have the version, it's absolutely no problem. Yeah. And if you are, yeah, and it's, and there's also a Kindle version available so on Amazon. So if you are in a place where it's hard to get it physically, you can always download a Kindle version. Um, it, uh, on my phone, I have an app called, um, what is it called now? Uh, Vedabase. Yeah. And there, there's, there's another app called Bhagavad Gita in English, the audio. So I have an audio version on my phone that I think I got for free. They don't think the Vedabase costs maybe the database costs something but there's a number of different ways that you can get yeah, the there is. translation so it's pretty easy well um this has been really um enlivening and um, one of the things that i wanted to close with would be maybe you could we could each just share um a little bit i'd love to hear just a little bit i mean delia you kind of mentioned a little bit that this came into your life really recently but and i'd love to hear loka and vidarba share like when did you i mean you're from india so i'm assuming that the bhagavad gita is around since the time you're a little kid but when was your first experience with it or when was your first serious connection with it like how did that come into your life so yeah i mean <laughs> Um, Bhagavad Gita, like you said, growing up in India was there. Uh, and I remember I would sit with my maternal grandfather, who I was very close to, and, uh, and I would try to read the Bhagavad Gita with him. I mean, he sort of uh, you know, initiated that. He said, why don't, you know, it's your summer break. Why don't we read this together? And I remember sitting with him and asking him all these questions, like, what does this mean? And what does that mean? And he had no answers. Like he, you know, he just like, it was just like a reading, you know, without, and I was so frustrated. I was thinking, gosh, like, I really want to understand what this means. And so that was, you know, back in the day. So even though we saw the book, but we didn't really have the key to the book. It was just there. And, you know, and we didn't really quite understand it. And so later, you know, when I got actually got introduced to it in Washington, D.C. on 4th of July, <laughs> that's when we found the book. And um, we started, both of us started reading it together. And 
and just you know just the introduction to the bhagavad gita was like you know we were like going, aha like it was like a you know light bulb moments you know <laughs> so yeah it was back 25 years ago um in 1996 fourth of july is when we first came in touch with the book and and then we took up a serious study together <laughs> yeah for me it was bhagavad gita was there but it was a book to be revered and uh, i didn't really get a, get into serious study because there was nobody who could explain it to me and i tried to study during my college from different authors but uh, i couldn't really wrap my head around it because the concepts were presented in a in a not so easy to understand manner and i just always put it away uh, only when we came uh, to america i was looking for answers deeper questions of life what is life where does life come from what is meaning what is this universe where does everything come from and uh, not finding any answers i i kind of kind of got into some kind of a internal space where i didn't really know what i was doing although um i had achieved everything i i was hoping to achieve in life like uh, ivy league education and and a good job and everything but then i was still feeling very empty and i didn't really know where to go and then it was um uh, uh, a stroke of luck that uh, we met some practicing devotees on july 4th and they invited us and i was very skeptical because i i, I didn't really have much faith or i was fully full of doubt and uh, slowly as i started reading the gita i guess the light bulb started going on in my head mm. uh, yeah it was such a such an amazing um experience for us and yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wanted people to hear that because i've heard you mention this before and um <clears throat> 25 years of of having the gita in your life and and learning it spending time with it spending time in groups with other people um Yeah, it's just it's been a part of your life for a long time and I think that's one of the benefits that I really that I'm really hoping that people get from from this is, you know, it's it's rare to find teachers that can, you know, really um hold your hand through such a beautiful wisdom tradition and and so I I really hope that everyone will take advantage of this. It's a it's a great opportunity to study the Gita in depth. And um Delia, do you want to say anything else before we wrap up today about your experience or anything any last pitch you want to give to everyone to check it out? Yeah, absolutely. I made so much progress during during the seminar during the course like where where I was by the end of it is leagues away of where I was at the beginning of it and I don't want anybody to be intimidated by the gita if you've had any sort of exposure to it before where you didn't like it or you don't know you're like maybe you're thinking well I've never read it before I've never experienced it if all you have is a passing curiosity about what this book is about that's enough to get you in the door and you will get everything you need within the seminar itself and it's presented as i said it's it's so accessible it's so down to earth it's so helpful and it's so applicable like it's not it's you're not just getting head knowledge like head knowledge you're getting heart knowledge out of it and the things that you learn since they do speak to the experiences of our soul they will affect your life and they will affect like the quality of your life as um it begins to work its way into you so i just i i can't say enough good things about this program i absolutely love loka and bidarba they are amazing teachers they are so knowledgeable um and so warm also too so i think everybody absolutely should sign up as soon as possible <laughs> that's great yeah, the kind words <laughs> the feeling is totally mutual <laughs> your warmth that makes us <laughs> yes it was your warmth that made the entire sangha glow <laughs> oh um, i'm going to share one last story with you guys too on that note um which is that um so i was at an astrology conference um in seattle I was at Norwalk. Some people watching this might know that conference. And I'm a Cancer Sun, Mercury Cancer. So I tend to be a little bit like recluse. Like I'm, I'll scuttle off and disappear for a long periods of time. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a little bit of a hermit crab. And, um, and I was in my hotel room feeling really antisocial. <clears throat> and I was reading the Gita. and it was my first time reading the gita again in years i just started this private yoga teacher training with um with a uh 
a bhakta, a devotee from DC. And we were starting to read the Gita together. And I was really like, I was diving in, you know, and I just, I was like, I just don't want to go down and talk to people about astrology. Like I'm feeling shy, anxious, and maybe tired. <clears throat> so I'm just going to read the Gita. And there was this, I was, I was literally just starting it again. So I was in like the first couple of chapters and there was a, a passage where Arjuna said, you know, basically like, can't I just check out of how challenging this field of life is? And can't I just kind of head to a cave and meditate? That was kind of his attitude paraphrased of my own paraphrase. And Krishna's like, Nope, sorry. And I felt really called out by it in my hotel room. Like, okay, I need to go down and relate to other human beings. I can't, <laughs> I can't just stay here in my room as much as I want to. So I went down and I sat at a table and one of my colleagues, Chris Brennan, who was there, came over. Many people know Chris Brennan from the Astrology Podcast. He came over and there was a guy sitting across from me talking to someone else. And he said, hey, you two should meet because you both own yoga studios. And my wife and I owned a yoga studio and, and this gentleman owned a yoga studio and i said oh cool you know that so i started talking to him and i was telling him my story about being in my hotel room reading the gita and feeling called out and like i had to come down and hang out and he just pulls if I, i'm remembering this correctly he just pulled out of his bag his copy of the gita he had one in his backpack or whatever and he was like um yeah i'm i belong to a bhakti temple in hong kong and the, for about three hours, we sat there and talked astrology and the Bhagavad Gita. And he is now pretty much my best friend in terms of my connection with astrology and yoga. And he's been into in the same communities, um, you know, the, of, of Bhakti in a, a different part of the world. I ended up meeting him for the first time in Calcutta. We went to an astrology conference together, shared our love of astrology, and then went to Mayapur together. Uh, to go and uh, and hang out in, in a pilgrimage site for the for for bhakti, and I'm just always reminded that it's it's the 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 Gita is not only is it enriching, but if you put yourself out there spiritually, you just say, okay, I can't sit in my cave. I have to somehow put myself out there into the world and try to live out my spirituality and find like-minded people. I have this feeling that this experience that the Gita is literally magic. It's not just, a, it's not just a book. It's like a passport that starts taking you places and connecting you with people. And like I said, like I bet I met pretty much him, my best friend now in the world, I, I would consider him. And I have a few other best friends, but he's like one of my best friends ever. And it just happened because I was reading the Gita. I felt called out. Like I was Arjuna who wanted to just sit in my cave and I didn't. And then I connected with someone. So, so beautiful. Isn't so, that cool? Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we just wanted to say that, Achita, it's been a, a pleasure and a greatest fortune to yes. uh, met you uh, like maybe three or four years ago. And, and your um, deep devotion and uh, uh, just, just the warmth of your heart is, is, is so enriching. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we can't appreciate our, our good fortune to have met you. Oh. And mm -hmm. every day you enrich us with your. Um, with your kindness and deep devotion, it's just really a gift oh, for us. Completely second that. Yeah, it's a, such a wonderful day when we met you and we've seen you through those years and just continue to inspire and, and, and share your wealth of wisdom mm. and knowledge with everyone. So thank you for being oh. our friend. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I've, I, I, yeah, the feeling is completely mutual. Um, I, I was, when I first got into Bhakti, for everyone listening, I was at a place in my life where I was really praying for a more grounded um, spiritual community and practices and Loka and Vidarbha, Delia too, who came in to my life last year when I was looking for a, a virtual like personal assistant for all of my work, you know, she came in because she was not only attracted to astrology, but really interested in bhakti. And so like, I, I feel like when you go looking for nourishment for your heart and soul you find it. People just start coming in, and um, I consider all of all, all of you my good fortune in the past few years, my greatest good fortune. So the feeling is deeply mutual. And before we all start um, singing "Kumbaya" and twirling in circles, no, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we, the, the 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 affection is super real and um, intangible, and and I hope that that you guys can all feel that who are listening too, and that you'll really enjoy um, 
you will really enjoy the Bhakti class. So um, we're going to put a link in the description of this video where um, you can sign up. There'll be a link to register. Is that, do I have that right, Loka and Vidarbha? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So yes. there'll be a link to register. And then once you register, do they receive an email with the link to join and the, the details about everything? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. I know, I know a question that people are going to ask. How long does the program run? Yeah. See, this is yeah. why Delia is always helping me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, I mean, we have designed it to like, uh, when we're doing it every day, it took us about three or four months. Uh, since we'll be doing it once a week now, uh, it may take us six to eight months. And depending on how people, how much discussion we engage in and things like that. And uh, yeah. But yeah. it's That's kind like, of the don't be intimidated by like, oh, I need to make an eight month, eight month commitment because it's Sunday evenings and it's like one hour an hour and a half sometimes, you know, if we, if the discussion is really good where you just get to like hang out with really cool people and discuss and, you know, just how life works and it's fun. I promise you it's fun. So <laughs> you'll enjoy and it. You'll... If you don't do the whole thing, still you'll get a lot out of yeah. it. Uh, our program went on for like three or four months and we would meet every single day. So we met Monday through Friday and everybody, m most people wouldn't miss a day. Yeah, so that yeah. just shows you how much we wanted to be there. And then when we finally finished actually studying the Bhagavad Gita, nobody wanted the course to end. So we just looked <laughs> for other things to look into so that we could keep meeting and uh, talking about things. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, this is really, I'm really glad that we could come on and talk about the Gita, um, talk about this, this beautiful, um, yogic wisdom literature and um to hopefully um bring people who are looking for more um spiritual practice um to some really great teachers and a really great group where you can hang out and learn more so um for a long time uh one of the core missions of uh, the the bhakti yogis has also been to share the gita with other people um, you know, that's our, that's our outreach. That's how we, um, also try to help people in the world who, um, are struggling. So that's, this is a part of my service too, as, as well as to, I'm doing this also because I, I deeply believe that the Gita is one of those texts that can have a profoundly positive impact on people's life. So I hope it will for everybody who is listening. Thank you again, Loka and Vidarbha for being here and um, just being so warm and, and uh, loving and supportive and Delia too. Thanks for being here and um, you know, helping promote this and, and taking part in it yourself. Um, so hopefully uh, we will all get to come together and talk again. If you guys have questions, by the way, that you want to hear more about with regard to Bhakti yoga, you can email me info at nightlightastrology.com and put bhakti question in the subject line. Those questions, I aggregate them. And the plan in the year ahead is to have Loka and Vidarbha and Delia and others back to unpack those questions. So this is also a space where, you know, I have a whole private channel full of bhakti content on my website. If you go to nightlightastrology.com, click on the bhakti tab. There's a, a growing library of videos about bhakti, um, and we can address lots of Q&A about all, all sorts of things regarding yoga philosophy So, um, and, and the practices of bhakti, too. So take advantage of that if you'd like. Uh, we'll say goodbye now. Thank you, Loka and Vidarbha, for being here, and Delia, Thank too. We really, really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Delia. Thank you, Delia. It's so good to see you. <laughs> okay. So good to be here with my teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Take it easy, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.